three minutes. Three yeah. minutes to try to go through it. It was from Ticker Vault, uh, follower of mine. Uh, he was just asking about sizing up trades. Yeah. Um, he or she was asking on Ticker Vault. I don't know if that's a boy or a girl. So we'll <laughs> Ticker Vault. Sizing up trades, meaning, okay, you're trading at a certain size level and you want to try to go to the next size level. And they were talking about the struggle. It's like, I want to get to that next size level. It's like, all of a sudden, I'm not doing as well as I was doing with smaller size. You're always going to see a little more slippage. As your size gets bigger, you're going to see a little bit more slippage. So if your strategy is making 90% at size 100 shares, you go to two or 300 shares, it's going to make a little bit less. You go to 500 shares, it's going to make a little bit less. You go to 1,000 shares, it's going to make a little bit less. It's slippage as you get bigger. 100 shares, really easy to get in out of. Most stocks, you know, you can get in out of a few hundred, 500, maybe 1,000 shares. You start to get into 1,000 to 2,000, you start to, okay, now you have to start to be able to work orders because it's not like I'm just getting in and out on the bed. I mean, we're, if we're trading Bank of America, it's easy. But if you're trading any smaller mid-cap stock, it's not that easy to get out of you know 500 shares, 1,000 shares, as it is to 100 shares. So you got to start you know working the order a little bit better. If you're just blindly bidding stocks, you push the price away from you. 100 shares will push the price a little bit. 1,000 shares will push the price a lot. So you got It's all about execution styles and strategies on how you get in and out. Um, you know, and, and ha trying to conceal the intention of your orders. One type of order I like to use a lot is a discretionary order where I put my order way lower than the current price and I put discretion on it because if I just, you know, throw, you know, my order right out there and go top bid on something with them, it's a really fast stock, you might get out top bid, but if it's a smaller cap or a mid cap name that isn't moving as much, you will actually push the price away from you because there's you know algorithmic traders that are reading, oh, we have a new buyer, they want to pay up more and they will try to make you pay up more. So uh, what I use is a discretionary order where I try to get outside the market. I'll go, if I want to buy the stock at say 25 bucks, I'll put 24.50 with 50 cents of discretion. So anything that that stock came and offered at like 24.80, I'd get 24.80, which is better than my 25. That's one thing to try to help with the slippage. If you're just struggling with the mental game of sizing up because all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're used to trading 100 shares and you're making, you know, 50 bucks or 80 bucks or 30 bucks, depending on your timeline. And now all of a sudden you're trading two or 300 shares. And I'm going back to when I started in 1999. I struggled with that mental game to get off 100 shares, where you know I started bright trading 1999. I was 100 shares, and I was being consistent. But when I go up to 200 or 300, I get more nervous, and psychological factors come in. I still struggle with that. I'm at a different size level now, but you know if I size up, where I start to like you know double my size on trades all of a sudden, I start to get more nervous with it because you're getting a little bit bigger than you're comfortable with. So you try not to get out of your comfort level. It's nicer when you can size up by just going up like 10% of the time, 20% at a time, not trying to double. I mean, when you're 100 shares to 200 shares, you almost kind of got to double because you're 100 share lots. But if you're trading like 1,000 shares or something normally, instead of going to 2,000, maybe go to 1,100, maybe go to 1,200. Don't get so much out of your comfort zone where the numbers are getting so much bigger, where the losers are getting bigger because when trades go against you, that it's affecting your psychological mindset on it. So that's how I've, you know, tried to size up, but it's something that all traders struggle with to a certain extent. We always want to get bigger, you know, we always want to get to a different size level. I mean, think about Chris Camilo, he trades huge size on stuff. I can't trade that kind of size on stuff, even though it's on some trades, I might have the capital to do it. I'm not comfortable trading size, you know, I don't like losing huge money on stuff. And Chris has had some big losers, but he makes big money too. So I mean, it's all a matter of what your comfort level is as well. So I like to stay diversified, trade lots of different stocks. I don't like to be in just one stock and all in. But, you know, again, you know, the psychological aspects do p come into play as you're sizing up. So try I'd to like to make smaller. two comments, two comments yeah. on this. One, if you're trading 10 stocks, you don't have to go up on size on all 10. Maybe you go up on a couple, you That's know, incrementally. Yeah. Yep. And then the other thing, which is much more important than that, is the market environment. OK, if you had a great week last week and like, oh, I crushed it on Friday and this and, and you're like, OK, I think a lot has to do with the market environment. So you could be ready to up your size, but it could be a market environment where the market is moving and you could make as much money on 500 shares as a thousand shares. Yeah. So just because you're ready to go, just because you're ready to do it, be aware what the market market environment is, because. The timing of it could just wreck your confidence, and then you bump up, you get crushed, and then you come down. So just make sure you get careful of the overall market environment. I'm constantly adjusting my size, and you're right, Joel. That's a huge factor involved. 
is, you know, when I have a strategy that's not working as well, I start decreasing the size on. I never stop doing the strategy because then I won't know when it starts working again, but I still employ the strategies, but I employ it less. So I'm like, okay, this isn't working as well. I'm going to just decrease the size on a little bit. Like Kathy, you know, buying Kathy Pops haven't been working as well. So, you, you know, if you're, that's your strategy, and like I said, you know, I've been actually going against that strategy to a certain extent. But, I mean, if it's your strategy, you're long only trading, and you're buying Kathy Pops and not working as well, you decrease the size when it's not working. And then you start increasing the size when the strategies start working again. It's a way to monitor, you know, what the strategy is doing too. So we could have an you know, hour conversation on this, but those yeah. are some tips there. So Ticker Vault, great question. Thank you for 